We know you're a natural on television, so don't get in here and get shot. You're, you're Leno Claus, and we got Santana Claus right here. I don't Super cool, Mr. Smooth. You know, he yeah. got all the swag like in the world. That, yeah. He got all the swag in the world. At the end of the day, it's about the legacy that you want to leave behind. I know I know a little bit about that, you know, having, having played a, a Dude, yeah. game. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, you know a little bit. <laughs> Do you? Players Club is presented by Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Washington Commanders. Welcome to the Players Club. I'm London Fletcher, joined always by Santana Moss. We got a special guest, mm -hmm. Charles Leno Jr. We appreciate you joining us. Welcome, hey, welcome, thanks welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Hey, now we like to have fun on the Players Club. Yeah. Now, you, we know you're a natural on television, so don't get in here and get shot. <laughs> you, 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 hey, he, he went in, he went to a local DMV uh, newsroom, and you did your thing. Yes, what, was, what was that experience like for you? Oh, it was good. It actually really was. Uh, it was just something that got brought up to me, you know, opportunity. And I'm not never shy for opportunity. I always love trying things new. And it was a good opportunity to have, and I have fun doing it. And hopefully I have more in the future, you know. Chad, I was telling him. I interviewed Charles a couple weeks ago, and I said, "Man, after seeing that, I, I'm, I can already see the <laughs> Charles Leno, yeah, yeah, the Charles Leno Junior show." Yeah. I just asked him if I could you know, let me be a be guest a on the show, it, yeah. man. Hey, y'all got me boy. here. Of course, I will have I'll you guys on. Boy. You know, definitely. it's some uh, other great news for you. Recently, got nominated mm -hmm. by the team as the uh, Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee for the team. What does that experience and that that award mean to you? Um, honestly, it's probably the biggest honor, I think, you know, especially coming from a team, um, being named the Walter Payton Man of the Year, just the nomination means a lot. Uh, but the award itself, it, it just speaks volumes. Think about like people that won it over the years, um, great players on and off the field, as well what you do with your time in this league. Um, of course, we have great players in this league, but what do you do with your time outside of that um, is, is a big thing. And I always love to give back to the community where I'm from, uh, and when I, where I've been and where I'm at right now. So that's in Oakland, California, where I'm from. That was in Chicago, where I played seven years, and here now in the DMV area. Well, you know, speaking of giving back, because a lot of us have, you know, had our, our time to do so while throughout our playing years. I remember starting my foundation as early as my senior year in college. What were some of the things that led you to, you know, uh, wanting to go down that path? Uh, I would say the birth of my first daughter, actually. Um, when you have that experience with your first child, um, all, I, all it's not about you anymore. Um, I'm be completely honest. Being young, being in the, in the NFL, all things about me. I'm selfish, you know. Uh, my wife, thanks, thank God for my wife. Now yeah. she put through, put up through all that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's about the legacy that you want to leave behind. Uh, you guys know that great players on and off the field, doing what you do on and off the field. It's about the legacy that you want to have. And it's you representing, I always, I always say you're representing the name on the front and the back, the of, your back, jersey, yeah. uh, back of your jersey. And that's that legacy I'm trying to leave behind. Well, one of the things that led me, just my upbringing, um, being from Miami, seeing some of the things that a lot of kids didn't have, seeing some of the things that I was afforded to have or was fortunate to have and still didn't have that much. You say you're from Oakland. Yep. I'm pretty sure that that uh, Oakland, from the Oakland I know, I'm not sure where you grew up, what side you grew up on, but I heard it's rough. Yep. What are some of the things you saw growing up that also could have contributed to you just saying, hey, man, I think I need to be one of those guys in the neighborhood that's being that voice or being that staple that these kids can look at and say, I, I maybe could be him one day. Yeah. Um, yeah, growing up in Oakland, I grew up in a place called Murder Dubs. So mm -hmm. that just let you know where I, wow. where I grew yeah. up. Um, but – the biggest thing I saw, like, when I went to school and stuff like that, they actually, I was fortunate, I would say, mm -hmm. because when I went to school, they actually did this, um, the Raiders did this, I don't know what they did, they just picked up kids, like, singled out a couple kids from different middle schools and, like, uh, elementary schools, and they brought them into their facility. So I had guys like Jerry Rice and Tim Brown and uh, Charles Woodson, and they was, like, talking to us, and not every kid pays attention, mm -hmm. but I was one of those kids that paid attention and actually listened. So I was able, I was fortunate enough to have that um, experience, and I took, I didn't take that lightly. I took that and I, I used that for motivation because they let me know that oh, I can be in their situation someday. You know, we've heard um, this year you'll be playing Leno Claus yeah. mm -hmm. for the holiday season, and and I feel I'm in the holiday spirit because you're you're Leno Claus and. We got Santana Claus right here. I don't, <laughs> Santana, you, you're doing great yeah. things with your foundation. Y'all yeah. both kind of similar in what you guys are doing, man. What, 
tell me about Leno Claws. Yeah, what's so that about? Leno Claws is uh, how it started. Was um, we were me and my daughter were just I was feeding my daughter, my first or firstborn. We're just sitting there watching like a Disney Channel. You know, they got the twenty five day countdown to Christmas. Uh, they play all these movies and all this different type of stuff. And I was talk, I was thinking about it. I was like, you know what would be really dope? And I was telling my wife, what if we did like a countdown all the way to Christmas, but working with different foundations or doing things for our foundation on that day? She was like, uh, you know it's like uh, November or something right now. Like, how am I going to put this together? Because she's the one that runs our foundation. And I was like, we can get it done, right? right and she right, was like, right. oh, I'm going to try. But we, got it. we were able to work with a lot of different uh, organizations in Chicago back in, um, and back in Oakland. Um, and then coming here, what we did was we went ahead and used the social media, our social media. So we let the community decide. Mm -hmm. So we went on uh, social media. We tweeted out, like, nominate different organizations that's, that's awesome. that you will love to see. And we uh, went through different organizations, and we, we narrowed it down to 20 of them. So the first 20 days is working with organizations and highlighting those organizations. Um, one of our big, my biggest thing I always talk about is awareness. Uh, people don't understand the impact uh, that these organizations have on their life. They think, oh, I'm in this situation, it's kind of over for me. No, it's not. There's people out there, yeah. these different organizations yeah. out there are willing to help, and they're 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 out there. You yeah. just have to know about it. A lot of people don't know about it. So me being in my position, um, I would love to spotlight those organizations to get that awareness out. And in the last five days, we work with uh, different families. And this year was has been awesome. We had a ton of different families that have been nominated, and uh, our team, Actually, our team, um, we actually went ahead and we used our team, and they were actually helping out different organizations That's as up. well. So we went from five to I think we have like 15 now mm. that, got, uh, that we can work with. Yeah, I'm a big giver too, man. So I love to be able to, I mean, and I always find reasons to just do something for others, mm -hmm. especially the holidays. I feel like you have to have that kind of holiday spirit. And there's so many people out there that's, um, less fortunate than us. And, you know, even if you didn't have anything, man, just giving a hand sometime for someone it's always big. And I think, too, it helps not only with your morale, but theirs. You know what yeah, I mean? I absolutely. love to see people's spirit this up. I mean, regardless if they have it or not, that one little gesture could yeah. go a long way. Yeah. And I'm superstitious because I used to always say it to myself, like, man, if I don't do what I do, then I can't be who I am. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm, and I'm not even talking about just as a football player. I'm yeah. talking about as a man. So that's great that you do that, man. And um, hats off to you. Maybe one day we could, you know. You know, collaborate or whatever, Absolutely. man, and, you know, get together. I got a lot of stuff going on, but I love to be able to be a part of anything if you ever need me. Yeah, and what you talk about with, with the morale, it makes you feel good mm. putting smiles on others' faces. Exactly. I mean, if you see somebody else smiling and, uh, you know, you brighten their day, mm -hmm. how can it not cheer you exactly. up? Exactly. You know? Yeah, that's dope. You know, um, looking looking at you guys and the way you've played, the way the team has played football lately, and people ask, hey, what's what's been the key I'd say the offensive line, first and foremost, the way you guys have have been able to run block and and being being a part of that success. What has been the biggest difference between the start of the season, starting one and four, and then the last um, eight games where we're six one and one? Yeah. So when I look at offensive line, it's five for one. You know, you got five players, but you all got to work as one. Mm -hmm. Early in the year, we had a, a lot of uh, interchanging parts. You know. And lately, we have some continuity on the offensive line. You know, a lot of guys that played a lot of years together, and it's kind of like, you know, we're, we're the same guys rolling out there. So I think that continuity is helping us, and we're able to, you know, mesh really well together right now. Well, one of the things, too, if you're speaking of count, continuity, that's, that's, that's key. I think that's key. But we always – we know, you know, throughout the season, you're going to have those, you know, moments where somebody goes down. And, yeah. and – uh, Fortunately and unfortunately, we've been dealing with that, you know, probably since you've been here, having a lot of uh, changeable parts. When you don't have the guy that you was lined up to last week or week before and you have to, you know, um, be looking forward to someone else, how fast can you get that person caught up and you, you guys could be in sync together, you know, just to know that, hey, this game, I'm going to need you, you're going to need me, we need to be on the same accord. Like, right. What is that process like? Uh, that process starts early in OTAs, early in camp, honestly. Uh, Coach Masco does a good job of rotating guys in, letting guys play with different different positions and play next to different people just because you never know when never that's going to happen. Um, so I think that's that's something that you got to continue to work on. And, you know, it's, it's, yeah, like you said, I, uh, I don't know much about receiver, but if you're the X on this play, you're not always the X. Yeah. Sometimes you got to be the Z, right? Yeah, right? Like you got to change it up. So I, I like that, that he does that, and it gets you different feels for different guys. Yep. That, that offensive line, man. I've I've always the 
best teams, I've always felt like the offensive line is always the closest unit on the on the on the on the on the team. Off the field, you guys got a lot of personality. What's what's take us kind of behind the curtain? What's what's it <laughs> yeah. like in that offensive live room All or right. or off the field when you guys are away from the the uh, park and how, do y'all hang out? Who's the oh, yeah. jokester? Who's the comedian? What I would. I wouldn't want to say I'm the jokester, but I'm the one that always try to keep things upbeat. You know, um, you got Andrew. I'm just gonna go off the line. You got Andrew. He's a robot. He is. Uh, he's a straight robot. Right. And he's hilarious though. Uh, when he, outside of football, he's he's a he's a jokester, man. He's yeah. he's awesome to be around. But in football, he's just like yeah, like that all, always. And then you got um, oh yeah, so many guys like just in and out. But West West uh, West Schweitzer. You know, just really cerebral, really smart guy. Um, uh, just has a lot of knowledge about everything. Uh, Trey Turner, super cool, Mister Smooth. You know, he yeah. got all the so swag in the like world. That, yeah. He got all the swag in the world. Best um, dress off the line. Oh yeah, always <laughs> best dress. <laughs> best best dental plan I as well. Threads, yeah. uh, you know, that's that's Trey. And then Big Luke, Big Luke competing. Right now with Trey for best swag on all my Oh, really? Yeah. See, I never would have. I yeah. never would have thought that. You, I didn't know a six nine yeah. brother can dress yeah. so fly. You wow. know what I'm saying? So, uh, but uh, the whole offensive line and Sam's just young right now. Yeah. Sam's still trying to figure out his way in the, in the NFL, and you now it's just a good group to be around. We all care about each other. You know? Hey, so what is it like? You know, to have a guy. You talked about Sam a little bit. Um, what is it like to have a young guy, and especially to see the season he had last year? We all probably was. You know, kind of uh, wowed by that a little bit, just knowing that he was young. And that's one of the hardest, to me, the offensive line, any position on the offensive line is probably one of the hardest positions to come out of college and be dominant as at. a young player. You know, as yeah. a young player. What is it like to have, for him to have that experience? And then that second year is a little rocky, it's mm -hmm. a little bumpy. How do you guys? You know, get into his ear and let him know that look, this is this is a part. This is why we play this game. This yeah. is why you selected to be this person to play this game because it's not going to always be peaches and cream. But you've got to roll with the punches. Yeah. Have you had that one on one conversation? Absolutely. Or yeah. You guys ever gotten his? No, I I, I definitely had that conversation with him. I definitely had to let him know like this is part of the NFL. You just you hit yeah. everything yeah. right. This is part of the NFL. There's going to be good days. There's going to be bad days. Yeah. You have to figure out a way to be consistent. So. Mm -hmm. Find a way to get a routine. I know I'm, I already know you guys already yep. know about the routine. You come in, you just be the same person every day. Right. It helps all the the roller coasters, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, to make it more consistent. Um, and it also, like he's dealt with a lot of injuries and yep. things like that too. So um, mentally, having to fight through that. Yep. Um, but he's a he's a tough he's a tough kid. Um, really love everything about him as a person on and off the field. He's, he's built for this, and I, I can't wait to see what he continues to do for his career. And I started basically every game after that. I never missed a game, but after that, I was starting every game. And ever since that first game, I was like, all right, I can play this game. Followers, I done retweeted a couple yeah, times for you, man. I got you. <laughs>
Thank you. Appreciate it. Time for the player profile presented by Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Washington Commanders. How can fans help you win the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award? Yeah, so on Twitter, go to Twitter and vote hashtag Walter Payton Man of the Year WPMOY challenge and then Leno at the end. Gotcha. And that's how uh, get on you can get you a vote, man. Yeah, go ahead oh, and yeah. give me a vote. Man. I know you got followers. Yeah, retweet. I know y'all got followers. I done retweeted go, a couple yeah, times for you, man. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. So that's how you do that. You know, looking at your you in particular, you've been – you know, modern day Iron Man. You know, so so to, uh, so to speak, 123 consecutive play games played and started. What has um? I know I know a little bit about that. You know, having having played a, a yeah. game. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, you, you know a little bit. Do <laughs> <laughs> you talk about? But it. I was I'm gonna ask you questions. About, I, you tell me what I need to <laughs> do. To continue. What are you tell talking about? Me, <laughs> crazy. I, I'm dumb, tough. I was man, a little wired. Was, man. We gonna talk about you first. Then we come back to me. I was a little wired, a little different. Oh man. What has been the key for you being able to to start all those games consecutively, you know, what 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 do you, what would you uh, attribute that to? Um, for me, I would I would contribute it to not if people look at the I'll say the work I put in, but I don't. It's not the work that you put in in the off season only. It's the work I put in during the season. Like I'm in here every day doing some type of lift, doing some type of movement, some type of prep for my body um, because. Like I, one of my favorite sayings that I learned from someone is a body in motion stays in motion. Mm. I love that saying because it makes so much sense. If a body's moving and constantly moving, which we're supposed to do, usually, you know, we're, not, we're, we're humans. We're not supposed right. to be sitting in seats all the time. We're yeah. supposed to be moving, walking around, doing yeah. things like that. If it's in motion, it's going to stay in motion. That's yeah. what we're built to do. We're supposed to be able to be fluid and moving right. and things yeah. like that. So I always just try to get some type of movement in every single day. Or it can be something for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, yeah. but it's something to keep me going and get me up in the morning, keep my body moving. Um, that's what I've been doing for almost my whole career. I learned that in Chicago. And like one of my vets said, just take care of your body, whether it's, you know, massage therapist, chiropractic work, all the things outside of the building. It's fine to go into the building, um, go into the training room. So yeah. uh, you make sure you get your treatment plans and uh, take, care of your body, take care of yourself outside of the building as well, making sure you have a, a team around you. Yeah, but, you know, just looking, you know, looking at me and playing – being able to play all those years and not not miss a game, I missed a game in high school because of injury. I had a, I sprained my ankle, mm. and I was on the sideline, man, miserable. Mm -hmm. Just man, I'm, they out there having all this fun. I'm over here miserable. I want to be out there having fun, and so I was like, if I can ever, you know, make sure I you know play a game, I'm gonna play a game if I can walk. And then how I end up becoming a starter, the guy ahead of me in the league, he got injured. I started the last game of my rookie year, and I started basically every wow. game after that. I never missed a game, but after that, I was starting every game. Wow. And I was like, man, I ain't let nobody get in my spot. Uh, so. You know what's crazy? That's the exact same thing happened to me. Mm. Really? Exact same thing. I know exactly. I mean, uh, Jermon Bushrod, who was my vet, Yeah. Um, he went down uh, for a shoulder. He had like a torn labrum, and then also he had a concussion. So he was going to be out for some time, like at least three, four weeks. Right. So I had to play. I remember Jay Cutler be like, hey, you better get your stuff together. Like, you playing this week. I was like, all right. And ever since that first game, I was like, all right, I can play this game. Like, you know, it took yeah. that first start for me to be, go yeah. out there and say, I okay. can do this. Got it. Mm -hmm. I got this. Like, if I just put in the work and keep doing what I'm doing, I can I can make I solidify myself in this league. And I was making sure that I never had that situation. So and I listened to him. He told me, like, take care of your body. The history in high school, you were a hooper. Yes. Something about those left tackles, man. Like y'all better recognize. Be sure to listen to the extended version of the Players Club podcast wherever you get your podcast. Plus, you can watch on Commanders YouTube and Commanders.com. Welcome to the Fight Club where everybody show me love. Yeah, yeah, show me love. Yeah, yeah, show me love. Yeah. John Van Cameron. For this week's game, the Commander's Charitable Foundation is teaming up with the U.S. Marine Corps for our annual Toys for Tots game. Fans are encouraged to bring toys to donate for the holiday season. 
Over 50 U.S. Marines from across the DMV will be on hand to help collect your donations, which will be distributed to children whose parents can't afford to buy gifts during the holiday season. If you get a ticket to the Commanders vs. Giants game tomorrow night, you'll receive a limited edition Love Your Melon Beanie starting at just $65. We want to see you for Sunday Night Football, so visit commanders.com slash loveyourmelon to purchase yours today. One word that describes Leno, Walter Payton Man of the Year. Okay. <laughs> oh boy, Johnny. Very Johnny. Sweet. One sweet man. The boss. More described Leno. Charitable. Exception. Hey, this is about oh, me. How hey, you gonna put this with a one word describes me? Me, man. Thank you. Is my mama gonna see this? Grotesque. 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 John don't even know that man, y'all. Consistent. Oh. Can I say old? Is that messed up? If I say old? He's pretty old. Caring. Fairly, man. That's too early. The word that describes Charles Leno is frumpy. Okay, frumpy. He's a little older, so he gets grumpy every now, but he's a lot of fun. Frumpy. I want to bring light to your athleticism, man. As a as mm -hmm. a offensive lineman, looking at your your history in high school, you were a hooper. Yes. What yeah. what uh what position did you play? What was your game like? I played four or five. My game, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't the the, the score of all scores, mm -hmm. but I lock you up and I can rebound and I can dunk. That's all oh, I did. Okay. I was like I was like uh you had to be leading rebounder. Yeah, a leading <laughs> rebounder. Dunk, I was. I'm pretty sure I was leading dunk. Ah, no, we had a guy that made it to the league. He definitely was. Who, Jer who's that? Jared Cunningham. He played. Yeah. It. Yeah. Okay. Um. So he was. He was our best player by far. But right, rebounds, dunks, and defense. Nasty, just hitting people on. on uh, <laughs> you don't come to the paint because you know how it was. You can just sit right there in the yeah. middle on the two three zone. Anybody can come through. Chuck. Uh, Chuck the cutter. Bow. Hit him. <laughs> just not. Uh, just set the set the tone. Something about those left tackles, man. We had Trent Williams. Oh, Trent man. was athletic. Uh, Trent, Trent, Trent could hoop too. Trent was a little different than you, though. Oh, uh, he was. Yeah. Um, he Trent. It's crazy. I'm not sure if you heard this story, but Trent, growing up, played running back. Did not hear that. Running back when <laughs> no, he was he, younger. He, so, he tried to imagine trying he, to tackle he, that dude. So that. you look at him and you see the things he's doing now. <laughs> yeah, it he, makes sense. He, he he said out of nowhere he just grew one day and it was just it went from playing running back to coach like this is your new body. You better get used to it. <laughs> but uh, if you watch that dude in the basketball court. I mean, effortlessly, man. Listen, so when I told you we went to Vegas at the, for my retirement mm -hmm. party, um, me and a bunch of uh, you know defensive players, Trent was out there. Oh, yeah. And D. Hall, D. Hall, you know, they, yeah. they, they set it out for him, man. We stand in – D. was in this um, this suite. They had a basketball court in the, uh, in the suite. So we hooping, hooping hard, man. And Trent was out there putting in work. Now, I had to put in some work, too. <laughs> Show him where it started. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was out of gas, though. I ain't going to lie. I was <laughs> You're right. But I actually – I went to college on the hoop scholarship. Yeah. Yeah, but I was rusty, so I'm missing layups initially. They laughing at me. Then it's like that muscle memory yeah, kick. Yeah. I, went back, I went to work it. on these boys. It was like, y'all better recognize. Now, I'm going to need to take this next game off, but y'all saw it. <laughs> right, 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 right. You saw me. <laughs> Yeah, but how'd you end up at uh, at Boise State? Uh, so I ended up at Boise State, random Coach Peterson, Chris mm -hmm. Peterson, one of my favorite coaches. He was not a football coach at all. Mm -hmm. He was a life coach. Wow. And the way he spoke to me, spoke to my parents, and how he was, you know, what he told us, like what he's about, it's everything that I just wanted. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's not – I didn't look – I don't know why I thought this way, but everything about me wasn't about only football. Mm -hmm. I was always thought I was. It's bigger than this. Gotcha. It's about life, you know. That's yeah. it's about going the way you the way you treat people, um, the way you are with your family, the way you are with your friends, like how, how you are as a person. And that was big, and that's what he always preached to us. Um, so that's why I really went to Boise. And then also, I'm a I only have one sister. I have an older sister. Mm -hmm. I don't have any brothers. And the brotherhood we had, mm -hmm. it was awesome. Like it was like uh, it was it was just real tight knit. I still talk to those guys almost every day. How know? was that commute for your parents? You know, just I know that's one of the things that drive cats to go to certain schools. Just knowing that, hey man, you, you say you grew up in Oakland, right? Yeah. How far was that? You know that. Yeah, I would say on a, on a plane flight, Southwest, maybe like an hour and okay, some so, change. So it wasn't too bad yeah, driving. Then, I would at say the same like, time. Yeah, but driving to the mountains probably like uh, ten hours. I would say. I often to ask you how many times y'all do you think they're gonna take that flight? And it was just knowing. I mean, I, I can't speak on everybody, you know, upbringings, but. 
Miami was big for me for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. One is University yeah. of Miami, and two, yeah. I'm, I'm down the street. My yeah. mom and me right. go nowhere. Man, we appreciate having you on the Players Club. This has been a great time. One thing we have all our guests do is sign this football for us, so we uh, appreciate you signing that for us, man. Hey, we, man. There ain't no we, more room on there. <laughs> that boy's going crazy. I got you. We uh man, we can't wait to see you play in prime time yeah. on Sunday night football, leading that offensive line, leading that team out there, doing what y'all do. Get it, baby. Can't wait, man. It's gonna be a man. I just want it's, FedEx to be packed and cracking. Yeah. It's gonna be rocking. Yep. Gonna we be need rocking. to have that thing jumping like back in 07, 08, 09. It needs to be rocking like that. Right. <laughs>